Our body is a busy factory producing energy and building materials, but this process creates byproducts or wastes that are toxic. These metabolic wastes and other unwanted substances are constantly circulating in the body through bloodstream. For example, during cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is produced as waste that is exhaled out of body through lungs. Some metabolic wastes are formed during breaking down protein, and electrolytes or salts are produced in the body along with excess of water that need to be removed. Removal of such wastes out of body is excretion. So, let's define excretion first. Excretion is the physiological process by which an organism eliminates metabolic waste products, toxins, and excess substances such as urea, carbon dioxide, water, and salts from its cells and body fluids to maintain internal homeostasis, prevent toxicity, and regulate osmotic balance. So, excretory system is like your body's built-in cleaning crew. Without excretion, these wastes would accumulate, resulting in poisoning cells and tissues. Excretion helps regulate blood pH, electrolyte balance, and blood pressure, ensuring our cells function optimally. Several organs play important role in the removal of waste from body, like the lungs, which exhale carbon dioxide, skin, which releases sweat-containing salts and urea, and liver, which processes toxins into safer forms. These organs play supporting roles, but the star of the show is the urinary system. Urinary system includes four key organs, the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. Together, they filter your blood, produce urine, and expel it from the body. So, let's discuss structure and function of each part. The main organ in the urinary system is the kidneys. The kidneys are bean-shaped structures located on either side of your spine, just below your rib cage. They perform several tasks like regulating amount of water and concentration of different solutes in that water to keep blood pH, as well as the production of erythropoietin. But the most important function is the constant filtering of blood, removing toxins and waste, while reabsorbing necessary components back to the blood. Each kidney is protected by a tough outer capsule. The kidney has a small opening on inner concave side, called renal hilum. Here important structures enter, or leave the kidney. Like renal artery brings blood into the kidney for filtration. Renal vein carries filtered blood out of the kidney. Your reader carries urine away from the kidney to the bladder. On top of each kidney there is an adrenal gland, not related to urinary system, but release hormones to control different body functions. Three layers of connective tissues and fats surround the kidneys that secure the kidney in place, provide cushions, and prevent spread of infection. The kidney has two main zones. The outer zone is called renal cortex, and the inner one is medulla which consists of renal pyramids. The renal pyramids are separated by renal columns made of cortical tissue. Blood vessels present in renal columns pass the blood to the renal cortex then into renal medulla, containing nephrons where actual process of filtration happens. The narrow part of renal pyramids, called papilla, is connected with branches minor and major calyx. These are the areas from where urine is collected from papillae. These calyxes join to form renal pelvis that connects the ureter to carry urine to the urinary bladder. Blood enters each kidney through the renal artery and urine is filtered out of the blood in nephrons. The urine will travel through papillae, collect together in renal pelvis, and then exit down through the ureter to the bladder. The filtered blood is going to travel through the renal vein and then back to the heart. But the real magic happens in over a million tiny units called nephrons, the functional part of the kidney. Each nephron starts with a glomerulus, a cluster of coiled capillaries where blood is filtered. It's surrounded by Bowman's capsule, also called the renal corpuscle, that is located in cortex. From there, the filtered fluid moves to medulla then back to cortex through a series of tubules, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle with descending and ascending limbs, the distal convoluted tubule, and finally, the collecting duct. So, how urine is formed? Urine is produced in three steps. Number one, filtration. 
Blood pressure pushes water, salts, urea, and other wastes through the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule, like squeezing juice from a fruit. This creates a filtrate, while blood cells and proteins stay behind. Number two, reabsorption. As the filtrate travels through the tubules, your body reclaims what it needs, glucose, amino acids, salts, and most of the water, sending them back to the bloodstream. The proximal convoluted tubule recovers about 65 to 70% of the filtered water, electrolytes like sodium and chloride ions and nutrients. The loop of Henle establishes a concentration gradient in the renal medulla, crucial for water and electrolyte reabsorption. Fine-tunes reabsorption of electrolytes and water occurs in distal convoluted tubule under hormonal control. This all happens actively, using energy for nutrients and passively for water returning back into peritubular capillaries surrounding the nephron. Number three, secretion regulation in collecting duct. According to the ADH hormonal signals, extra wastes like hydrogen ions, potassium, and ammonia are added to the filtrate to fine-tune your body's balance. By the end, concentrated urine collects in the renal pelvis, a funnel-shaped area. There are two types of nephrons, cortical, shorter loops for basic filtering, and juxtamedullary, longer loops for concentrating urine in dry conditions. Amazingly, this process helps regulate blood pressure and produces hormones like erythropoietin for red blood cell production. Once urine is ready, it leaves the kidneys through the ureters, two muscular long tubes that connect each kidney to the bladder. Using wave-like contractions called peristalsis, they carry urine downward, with special valves preventing backflow. Next, the urinary bladder, a stretchy, muscular sac in your pelvis that acts like a storage tank. It can hold up to 500 milliliters of urine comfortably. As it fills, nerves signal your brain, time to go. Finally, the urethra, a tube that carries urine from the bladder out of the body. Sphincter muscles act as gates, relaxing during urination to let urine flow out. Together, these organs ensure waste is safely transported and expelled, keeping your body toxin-free. And that's the human excretory system, your body's efficient waste management team. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new, like, subscribe, and share. See you in the next video.